What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Today in this episode, we're going to go over how to repair a severely cracked bumper with a combination of some plastic welding, some epoxy. We'll go ahead and get this thing all knocked out, sprayed in our home garage and make it look beautiful once again. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first step in any bumper repair is to get the bumper off the car. So we have the whole bumper off and all the extra pieces that are on the bumper completely removed, which is very important for a proper repair. Now, what we have here is just a basic, basic um, heat gun. And what we wanna do is heat it up really, really good. We wanna get this all back into shape. Then from the back, we can just take a regular hammer and kind of knock out those spots that might be a little bit low. So we got it all grinded out now. There's still some cracks in the surface here that we want to address. So for that, we're going to use the uh, Dent Fix uh, plastic welder. And we'll use this first, and then I like to go over it with some epoxy. But this will hold together the uh, plastic really good. And uh, let's go ahead and open it up, and I'll show you how to set it up. So they will come with the uh, plastic that you need according to what bumper you have. And we'll go ahead and identify the bumper that we have here in just a moment. And then we have the heat module here, which has many different heat settings according to uh, what plastic you are using. So we have everything ready now. We identified the plastic as polypropylene, uh, and so we'll be using these rods right here. And uh, we need to first v-groove out the plastic before we can insert some plastic back into it to weld it up. And that v-groove creates a nice valley for that plastic to sink right into. We'll set our heat just around seven, and screw in our attachment. From here we want to make sure everything is nice and clean so that the plastic can stick. Now here comes the time that we're going to take the rod and feed it through the attachment rod. This way the plastic is going to be meeting up with the old plastic through the value you created by v-grooving. At this point once you've melted in all the plastic what you're going to want to do is take your teardrop attachment and smooth it out. You can also add more plastic at this time if you find that it's just a little bit low. And on the back side, we'll use our tear-shaped attachment as well to make sure that we're melting in the plastic together. This is very, very important for a proper repair. And then we'll take some 80 grit and we'll start to sand it down and knock down all that plastic that might be just a little bit high, making sure that we go inside our valleys and different areas of the bumper that need it. This is going to be the toughest part, but the most important part, because if we don't get it level, then well, it will never be nice and flat in the end. Next up, for good insurance, we're gonna use one of the best epoxies I've ever used, Lord Fuser 100 EZ. This is gonna go into each one of those little crevices and make sure that you have a nice tight bond. So flatten it out, push it in, and then we're gonna go on the back side and use some 80 grit on the area you weld it. Clean it off once again, make sure everything's nice and clean, and then you'll use your um, static tip and you're gonna get it into every one of those crevices. A repair from the back and front side is a proper repair. From here, you wanna let this dry for a good three hours and it'll turn rock hard. So now that the epoxy is all dry, we can hand sand it, which we might do, and we can also use a machine sander, which we have right here. Now, the thing I like about this is it is uh, powered by 120 volts so we can plug it right into our wall. Uh, let's get to the guts of the actual system itself. Now, it actually comes with um, foam sandpaper, so we're gonna test that out and 
various different grits it comes with as well. And taking a look at the different abrasives here, they're kind of like a foam sandpaper, which is pretty cool. Now this can be used for um, body work or even refinishing of uh, cabinetry, whatever it might be. Just as long as you're using the correct grit, you'll have no problem. Now the kit here is actually a square sander. Um, they do have the six inch round disc for the other kit, but we went with this one to test it out for now. And it does have the option for a vacuum feed if you want to keep dust down. And it's just a four inch little sander, which will be all we need for this project. So let's go ahead and hook it up and give it a try. And it has kind of a push button start right here. So we'll turn it to green and it's got um, plus or minus and it's kind of got like a soft feel to it. I'm going to start off with a 180 grit. I don't like to go too aggressive. Uh, we just kind of want to shape that filler out and by hand we can finish it up. So we're going to use the sander to knock down the high spots of the epoxy. We can do this first and then we can go by hand and well it's doing a pretty good job of shredding it up. So we'll take a round block and we'll use this in the area that is curved. You want to use the appropriate block for the situation. That way you're evenly sanding it. Uh, over here in this area we're using the block once again. A squared block is not the correct block to use. We could really get into the valleys and into the different contours of the actual bumper itself. Now we're going to be uh, choosing a 4 to 600 grit, a very fine grit right here. And we're going to go over the areas that are around the bumper cover we're going to get ready for our next stage which is going to be a body filler we don't want any body filler to land on any areas that are smooth so we'll clean it off and at this point we have a flexible filler that's meant for plastic and this is going to be for any pinholes kind of a last resort to make sure that everything is smooth so we'll go over the whole working area any other areas that we had imperfections in we'll go over and give it a nice skim coat this is the last stage before we go ahead and we use our primer coat. And again, we're gonna using our sander here. We started off with 180 and I just, I just like to use the sander to knock everything down. Give me an even playing field. Then I'll come over with the block, the same round block to get that same contour that I'll need. And this is gonna be the toughest part once again. You're gonna to have to do this by hand if you want a nice finish. The sander is great because it helps cut down on the time need it but uh, some of the best work is done by hand taking your time making sure it's nice and smooth using the correct block they're also going to want to use your guide coat at this point we want to remove those 180 grit sand scratches so here we have a 320 and we're going over the whole surface all of our body filler and we're removing every single one of those 180 grit scratches we're getting ready for the preparation of the primer because we want our primer to set onto a 320 crit scratch and not something so coarse like a 180 because that is just going to shrink so just going over it multiple times using a maroon scuff pad here uh, extending this out further on the areas that the sander just cannot get to the little crevices that way when the primer hits it we know that the primer is going to stick once again cleaning making sure our body work is good this is a solvent based wax and grease remover and it's all masked off for primer where we needed it to be we had some areas in here that were just little chips that we smoothed out now we are using all tamco products here now we are using their direct to metal high build primer now i did check the text sheet because that's what you want to check all the time and it does work on plastics and a whole bunch of other different substrates so we are good there we also have the paint code they do mix up paint and they send it right to your door which is cool because a lot of you guys online don't know where to get paint now it is an audi code but it's volkswagen so that's the paint we're using our reducer and then we have a very nice clear we're going to put on there so let's go ahead and spray some primer and for spraying we're going to be testing out fuji semi pro 2 now this is more of their budget turbine uh, we went ahead with their m model gun it's a little bit different but it's very very interesting the way it's designed now i will say we did swap it out for a 0.8 you want to run a very very small tip on these turbines so the paint comes out a little bit more smoother because it atomizes well so we're gonna go ahead and hook this up and start spraying some primer now this gun you can use all the way through through primer sealer base and clear and that's just what we're gonna do and for that first coat of primer if it's spraying not too fine and it's kind of coming out dry you can always add 10 percent reducer to your primer mix 
That's going to help smooth things out just a little bit. Your first coat, just get it on there. I don't want you to pile it on. That can cause adhesion uh, issues. So we went here with uh, three coats. I'm just going to show you two. And I have about 10 minutes in between. You want to make sure that before you put the second coat on, that it is doled out. You don't want to put it on when it's still wet. Uh, just again, adhesion. And then we'll use our guide coat. And this is going to show us where we need to sand. Uh, this is 400 grit here. And once again, we're using our surf prep sander to knock it down. And we have that soft foam uh, sandpaper on there to take all the curves and contours of the bumper and you don't necessarily need to use the block here we've done all of our blocking already in the previous stages so at this point we're just taking the primer and we're smoothing it out and using our sandpaper by hand where we need to in those different contours and then we'll guide coat it again and at this point we're going to use this 600 to 800 very fine sandpaper and we're going to smooth out our primer and the guide coat is going to show us where our 400 grit scratches still are and then we'll carry that into the rest of the bumper where the clear coat is we'll scuff it up for adhesion because we'll be blending into these particular areas with our base coat and then clear coating it on top you can see that the sandpaper does pretty well at tearing up the clear coat now you don't want to burn through a burn through is when you just go too far to the base coat and that will mean you need to put base where you don't want to. You just want to put base where the primer is and then feather out that repair. At this point we'll use some super clean foaming degreaser. I always like to wash down my uh, bumper covers or whatever I'm doing with a good quality degreaser. You don't need to use this one particularly but I do like it. You can see the dirt is coming off and we do not want to paint over that. So water is a good um, it's a good way to get things clean. We're using our scuff stuff or our bulldog adhesion prep cleaner. And uh, at this point, we're just getting into all those nooks and crannies, the top of the brackets, the sides. And this is a good way to get things nice and smooth. And it was a hot day today, so he might need to take a drink every once in a while. Hose never really hurt me growing up, and it still hasn't. So at this point, we're ready for our base coat. Now this mixes one to one. So that's one part paint and one part reducer. Now I will say that there was many variants in this color and we went with standard, hoping for the best possible paint match. And well, it looks pretty good in the end, you'll see. So we mix it up with our slow reducer. I always like to use slow reducer. The paint is just gonna smooth out. It's gonna spray much better when you use that slow reducer, especially in very hot temperatures in your summer. Uh, it's just a very, very good idea. Now, last but not least, we'll do one final clean with solvent-based cleaner. You can never be too clean. Always good idea to strain your base coat before you spray. Now we're going here and tack racking it off, making sure any last bits of lint. And then we're going to go ahead and spray our first coat with our Semi-Pro 2. Now I notice that the paint's coming out a little bit thick. And although there is a learning curve with setting up your paint gun, I just noticed that something just wasn't right. It wasn't atomizing the way I am used to. So I disconnected it and we went back to the Q5 and I pumped it up. And as soon as I uh, got it all hooked up and sprayed on that second coat, I could just notice a big difference to the atomization of the base coat. It was much finer, smoother, what I'm used to uh, out of, uh, you know, when I go to spray in a spray booth or any gun that's doing the job properly. So uh, the Semi Pro 2 is a great unit still. Uh, I'm still going to mess around with it, but I needed that extra power from the Q5. And that exactly is what I'm getting here when I'm kind of blend out that base coat. Now, I want to make sure that all my areas are covered. So I'll use the uh, sunlight uh, by Astro, making sure that there's no primer left over, making sure I don't have any model, which is blotchiness of the base coat. And now it's time for clear coat. Now, all you really need is two coats of clear. And I will say there is a learning curve with turbines. Uh, it, they don't come out 100% smooth right away. There's a lot of uh, working with it to get it to where you want, but you can get amazing results if you just take the time and uh, you know get used to it. The first coat of clear is not gonna go on smooth. It's gonna be a little bit of peely. And as this clear coat lays down and as it dries, it has self-leveling agents in it. So it will level out a little bit more, which you'll see 
uh, after the second coat. So we put the first coat on and then we wait about a good 10 minutes in between coats, making sure that you check that technical data sheet for these reference of numbers. And the second coat is here. You can move a little bit slower. You already have that tack grip on there from the first coat. So you know that your second coat will be able to stick so you can kind of get a little bit more aggressive with it. I like to divide the bumper into about three or four quadrants. I do different sections at a time so I can focus. I move from top to bottom or bottom to top. It really doesn't matter. Now this bumper stand is a 3M bumper stand. It is awesome. I just built it and it does exactly what you need uh, for the bumper. It puts it up at a good height for you. You can move it, tilt it, whatever you want to do. So highly recommend it. I'll put that link in the description if you want to go ahead and check it out. And after it's uh, dry, it looks pretty good for a home garage. It looks great. We take it out here in the sun and you can really see the metallics glisten. Uh, nothing like seeing a fresh paint job in the sun. Uh, it looks really, really, really nice. So at this point, we are ready to assemble. We let it dry overnight and uh, making sure we take careful pride and, and care when putting these together because we don't want to break anything at this point and we are pretty much ready to get it back together and take a look at how it looks still gonna put the uh, tail light assembly in but just a couple quick screws here and there and she is good to go well that's gonna wrap things up for this video and I really hope you learned a lot now I know we used a variety of different tools and well there is a cost with those tools and I'll link everything in the description so if you're serious about getting into this field or even if you're a hobbyist and you plan to do this many times uh, it, it might be worth your investment you know to have those tools if this is just a one-time thing take it to a body shop you're gonna spend way more in tools if you don't plan to ever use them again than you would if for the repair of the actual bumper cover. Now guys, if you're interested in getting some more answers to your questions, make sure you join our Facebook group. I have a link in our description. Also, join me on Instagram, paint.society. And if you do wanna support the channel, check out the link down below. There's a whole bunch of different merchandise. And until next time, guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. Let's check that out.